I love my great little car, Mazda's great little car. Back in 1977, Mazda began exports of their fourth generation Familia compact car, known in most of the world as the 323, but in America it was called the GLC, short for Great Little Car. Although it was often compared to the Chevy Chevette, it would later share its design with the Ford Escort, have its sedan version renamed the Protégé, and become one of Mazda's best-selling cars until its replacement, the Mazda 3. This is the story of the Mazda 323, also known as the GLC and the Protégé. This is my old car. The piston engine Mazda GLC. Four marks, starting at 3074. Great little goodies at a great little price. It's a great little car. Thanks for all the suggestions to review the Mazda 323, the GLC, and its later sedan and wagon versions, the Protégé. For those who participated in my recent poll to choose a topic for my first Mazda episode, yes, I know the RX-7 and RX-8 won the poll, whereas the 323 got second. So what gives? Well, my channel has gained more of a following and does better with episodes on more overlooked cars like the 323, so I wanted to try that one first. My Jennifer, my golf clubs, and my bassoon all fit back here. Oh, more front leg room, bigger hatch, rear window defroster, washer, and wiper. The RX-7 may be my next Mazda episode, unless enough of you out there convince me otherwise. What much of the world knew as the Mazda 323, and the United States knew as the GLC, its name from its home country of Japan was the Familia, which had been built there since 1963. Specifically, the Familia was built in Hiroshima, an incredible achievement considering that city had been literally wiped off the map less than 20 years earlier. But just how well has Hiroshima adapted this European idea? By the start of its second generation in 1967, the Familia increased its exports to Australia, South Asia, and later to Europe with the name 1200, available as coupes, sedans, wagons, and even a pickup model. Americans saw their first Familia imports in 1971 with the rotary engine R100 and its more conventional four-cylinder version, the 1200. In 1972, America also got the 1.6-liter four-cylinder engine Mazda 808 based on a larger version of the Familia, appropriately named the Grand Familia. The 808 also had a 1.3-liter version, which America knew as the Mazda Miser from 1976 to 77. But the most famous Mazda during the 70s was likely the rotary engine RX-3, based on the Mazda Savannah, and the predecessor to the RX-7. For those of you who don't know what a rotary engine is, I'm not going to explain it all here, but I probably will get into more detail when I do an episode on the rotary engine RX-7. Let's just say here that when it comes to emission levels and fuel economy, the more conventional four-cylinder design won out, with imports of the RX-3 ending by 1978. By this time, Mazda had also started their fourth generation of the Familia in Japan, and began exports using the name 323. But in America, presumably more as a marketing gimmick, it was called the GLC, and the commercials of the day made it painfully clear that GLC stood for Great Little Car. It's a great little car! The piston engine Mazda GLC. The makers of these ads often stated that the GLC was piston engined. I question how many people back then really knew the difference between a piston versus a rotary engine or would even care. It may be word of the rotary's poor fuel economy had spread around far enough that Mazda needed to emphasize the GLC engine to convince potential buyers that this new Mazda was a much more fuel efficient car. Another thing you couldn't help notice is how close the GLC looked like one of its biggest competitors back then, the Chevy Chevette. In fact, some people back then called the GLC the Japanese Chevette. Now admittedly, all little Econo boxes back then had a similar look but the lines on the GLC were so similar to the Chevette that one may have thought back then that the same company was behind both cars. Well, they weren't, but they did share some Japanese ancestry, considering that GM partnered with Isuzu to build the similar Gemini. But this similarity to the Chevette would only be with the GLC's hatchback models. The GLC was also available in wagon body styles, something the Chevette never had. Mazda also offered a three-door, two-seat panel van version, but that one was more rare and didn't make it to the U.S. Like the Chevette, the GLC started out with round headlights, but soon switched to square. And also like the Chevette, the engines were small, really small, with the US version starting with a 1.3 liter 4 that made just 52 horsepower. By 1979, the US version's engine increased to 1.4 liters, but it still only made 65 horsepower. Although keep in mind these cars only weighed, on average, around 2,000 pounds, or around 900 kilograms. But big changes were coming for 1980. An entirely new body was designed for the fifth generation Mazda Familia and it switched to front wheel drive. Just one look. That's all it took. Yeah, just one look. 
Well, at least the hatchback and sedan did. The wagon soldiered on in its original rear-wheel drive version for five more years. This new Mazda was now, for the first time, not entirely a Mazda. Instead, the design of the new Familia was partnered with Ford, who had acquired a 25% stake in Mazda in 1979 to help Mazda avoid bankruptcy. Another product of the joint effort was the Ford Laser, essentially a rebadged 323, sold in Asia and South America, and the Ford Meteor, sold in South Africa and Australia. But in Europe, Ford kept the 323 name and marketed it alongside its own third generation Ford Escort that began sales that same year. And to be clear, this Escort was not the same car as the Escort that Ford launched in America. You can learn more about that one in my American Ford Escort episode. By 1985, production on the fifth generation Familia switched to the sixth gen, and Ford continued to market rebadged versions of the Laser and Meteor across the world. And even Ford Australia imported the 323 to be sold alongside the Meteor. But in America, it was the end of the GLC name, with the car now being called the 323. I'm really glad she's grown up to be sensible and practical, just like her old man. Yeah, right, Dad. The wagon version, which had stayed on the old fourth gen rear drive platform, was now front wheel drive and sharing the platform of the hatchback and sedan. Mazda also offered a cabriolet, but that never made it to the US. In 1987, Ford began offering yet another variation of the 323 in the US, but instead marketing it under their Mercury division, calling it the Tracer. The Tracer effectively replaced the Mercury Lynx, which was a rebadged version of the American Ford Escort. Although it only lasted until the end of the Familia's 6th gen in 1989, this first generation Tracer became one of the few Mercury's that wasn't a rebadged Ford. The Tracer would skip the 1990 model year and come back in 1991 as a twin to the American Ford Escort. But before the 6th gen wrapped up, Mazda offered a higher performance version of the 323, and for the few of them that made it to the US, they've become valuable commodities, assuming you can find one that hasn't been overly modified or crashed. This special trim level was called the 323 GTX, and it was a homologation, meaning a production car that can be sold to the public but also meets specific racing guidelines. Its 1.6 liter four cylinder was, of course, turbocharged, had all wheel drive, Recaro racing seats, and in production form, made 132 horsepower, a sizable jump from the base model. The rally spec horsepower was almost double that, and with the proper tuning and know how, many owners figured out how to get their street cars closer to the rally spec performance levels. Sadly, all those mods and the extreme limits they were driven to shortened the life of many of these cars. Production of the 7th Gen Familia began in 1989, but yet again, the wagon didn't change, remaining on the 6th Gen platform. So although you would expect the wagon body panels to not match the hatchback and sedan, even the hatchback and sedans themselves didn't share any body panels. It just feels right. And Mazda changed the name of the sedan to the Protégé, leaving the 323 name on the hatchback and wagon. The Protégé's LX trim could be had with a 125 horsepower 1.8 liter, and even had power windows and locks, luxuries that early Mazdas never offered. The American Ford Escort also started its second generation, with the Mercury Tracer now built alongside, sharing the same platform as the 323 and the Protégé. If you wanted a sportier looking version of the 323 with pop-up headlamps, you couldn't get it in America. Mazda marketed this version in Europe, Australia, and Asia as the Astina, but despite the sporty look, it didn't offer a turbo or all-wheel drive. Although by 1992, you could opt for the 323 GTR, with as much as 207 horsepower. Sadly, that one didn't make it to the States when it was new, but it's now old enough to be imported, if you can find one. The 8th Gen Familia starting in 1994 saw a big change in size, with the American Protégé now almost as big as the Mazda 626, which was Mazda's mid-sized car offering back then. When it came to safety, we didn't spare a thing. The wagon version was dropped, in favor of a van that was a rebadged Nissan. Americans didn't see this one since Ford still offered a wagon with its Escort model. Although the 323 name was still in use worldwide, other names such as the Artis, the Etude, and the Allegro were used in various markets. Some also knew the hatchback model as the Neo, including in Canada. The final 323 started in 1999 with yet another redesign. With the previous gen size growing to almost as big as the 626, this new generation now shared a chassis design with the 626, and even a variation of the 626 engine. So, so. The wagon was brought back this year, known in the U.S. and Canada as the Protégé 5. Zoom, zoom, zoom. In 2001, you could get the limited edition Protégé MP3 with a sport-tuned suspension and 140 horsepower, but they were rare with only 1,500 made. And in 2003, you could get the Mazda Speed Protégé, an upgrade to the MP3 with 170 horsepower and, with what was probably considered massive at the time, 17-inch wheels. 
But the Mazda Speed Protégé was also the swan song for the original 323. Ford dropped their Escort and Tracer that same year, and by 2008, Ford had to lose their controlling interest in Mazda to help avoid bankruptcy. Mazda managed to stay afloat without Ford, with their replacement for the 323, now simply called the 3, becoming one of Mazda's best-selling models. It is still in production and sold worldwide as of 2021. Although like all small cars in America, they are far overshadowed by Mazda's SUVs that share some of the same architecture, such as the new CX-30. Although Mazda only holds a 2.3% market share in the United States as of 2021, it has been increasing each year for the past several years, so they've been holding their own without Ford's help. And they did it, thankfully, without bringing back the old GLC jingle. It's a great little car! Thanks for watching. If you liked this video, click the like button and subscribe to my channel. If you once owned a car from the 80s to mid 2000s that you rarely see today and would like it featured in a future episode, leave a reply in the comments or contact me at the email shown here. See you next time. It's a great little car.